to my doll customizing journey. My name is Josephine and these are my creatures. I love participating in swaps, so here is another swap doll video for you guys. This swap was hosted by the lovely Delicious on Instagram. She had the genius idea to make dolls based on our swap partner's culture. My partner for this swap was Vanessa and her culture is British. She requested a Victorian era inspired doll. And after hearing that, my head was steaming with ideas and excitement. So, I started to gather pictures that fit the theme and that spoke to me. I love these lacy white tops that were popular in the late Victorian, early Edwardian times. I wanted the doll to feel like she could be Vanessa's ancestor, so I went with her red hair and freckles. For this custom, I will be using Twyla's head, for her sweet face mold will translate nicely to the character I have in mind. But I'm gonna steal the body of this Draculaura, for I need her to be taller and older looking. I prepped Twyla's head by cutting the hair short and removing the factory face paint with 100% acetone. To perform the head swoop, I warm up both of the victim's head with my hair dryer. I discard the Twyla body. If you want to know what I ended up using it for, watch this video in the info card right now. To remove the rest of the stubble, I use my handy pliers. Now all clean and ready for the first layer of MSC. To change the skin color of Twyla's head, I thought about trying the pastel method. I prep yellow pastel to counteract the purple tone of her skin. After a layer of MSC, I used this makeup sponge to apply the pastel. I thought I could this way maximize the color payoff of the pastels. I only use yellow for the first layer and for the other ones I use a beige colored one. Four layers of MSC and pastel and I got decent coverage. I also add blush when I'm at it. Looking back I think I should have used more layers or used the yellow layer twice to get a better result. I start with a very light sketch of the features. When I'm happy with the things, I darken the lines with brown watercolor pencil. Brown pencil is also great for adding freckles here and there and everywhere. Next in line is the eyebrows. For this time, I go in with only two different colors of brown pencil. The whites of the eyes are kind of hard to get opaque with regular watercolor pencils, so I use my trusty acrylic paint. I want her to have soft, rosy and natural looking lips, so I use pastel with Derwent watercolor pencil on top in the color crimson. Saying that out loud, makes me feel like I'm narrating a makeup tutorial. My watercolor set still lacks a good light pink, so I use acrylic paint again. Vanessa, according to my intensive internet research through her social medias, has brown eyes, so I'm giving my doll the same eye color. The eyes get black pupils and some shading. I wish I would have done the shading darker 
pour on the finished doll, you can't really tell that it's there. Then some highlights on her top and bottom lips, inner corner and bottom edge of the eyes. I add plain dots for the eye shines this time. While holding my breath, I draw in teeny tiny bottom eyelashes. Her face up just needed something extra, so I'm adding a little bit of shimmer with a pearly eyeshadow. Then it's gloss time. I went too heavily on her lips, so the gloss ended up with some bubbles inside, but you live and you learn. The Victorian style seems more elegant and glamorous, so I'm adding fake lashes to match that. A little bit of a trim and the lashes are ready. Then to the body mods. First cut her in half with a power tool. I hope nobody hears this out of context because that sounds really bad. I also take off her neck. Okay, now I sound like a serial killer. <laughs> I put her back together with two-part epoxy glue. I think it's worth to straighten the doll's posture because it makes the clothes fit more accurately. Magic Sculpt is my choice for the sculpting medium, but you can use whatever works for you. Milliput, epoxy sculpt or air dry clay. I like to use Magic Sculpt because it's easy for me to buy and get it delivered where I live and it comes in small packs. So if you just want to try out body mods, you don't need to get a huge expensive tub of the medium. It's pretty simple, mix A and B together and start adding clay where you want it. I add thickness mostly to her hips, thighs and butt. I try to smooth everything out as best as I can while the clay is wet. A little bit of water helps out. After everything is dry, I go in with this quick filler that is meant for fixing holes on your drywall. It sands super easily and it's smart to try to fill the holes and sand down the bumps than trying to sand down both. My arch nemesis sanding is next. Oh, sanding, sanding for days. The tippy toes need to go, for I want a doll to wear realistic looking vintage shoes. 
and the arch on those is a lot lower. I think the feet look decent. If you consider that these were my first pair of feet, I sculpted from scratch. Trying to match her head was pretty tricky, but I think I got fairly close. She is going to have a long sleeve blouse and a high neckline, so it should not bother too much in the end. I prep the body with MSC as well and blush it using the same soft pastels as I did on the face. I also add freckles of camera to further match the face up. I want this doll to come off as very sweet and shy, kind of a dreamer and book loving person. These were the images that inspired me. I kept the Victorian style in mind when searching inspiration. To make the woven hat, I use a round plastic object, some craft glue and twine. This version came out too big, I used the cap of my MSC can. So do use something smaller if you want to try this out. Here is the pieces for the blouse. I start with hemming the sleeves and hemline of the blouse. Second, you need to close the side seams. Then it's just a matter of sewing the sleeves closed and attaching them to the bodice of the blouse. I made this adorable collar with a piece of lace and check this out! I saw Meiko's house on Instagram do these kind of buttons on her clothes and they really work! Awesome! Here I'm making some rough paper patterns for the skirt. I'm transferring my patterns to fabric once I'm happy with them. I'm using this dark velour or velvet fabric the soft finish is a nice contrast to the other materials in the outfit and I think it gives the right vintage feel. Vanessa told in her swap info that her favorite color is turquoise. So I'm trying to incorporate that in my design. To start the shoes, I close the back seam. Then it's good to glue on the edges down to the inner sole made from crafting paper. I cover the toe with clay. After that, I add the outer sole. Paint everything black and add the pin to act as a base for the heel. I sculpt the heel out of Magic Sculpt. For her hair, I'm trying out alpaca fibers for the first time. And I do have to say, I really like them. They look so realistic and it feels so soft. I got this alpaca from Etsy and the seller is navy blue navel. The color is pretty, but too close to the doll's skin tone. So I'm tweaking the color a bit with my own hair dye. 
because alpaca is a natural fiber, you can use normal hair products on it. To make the wig cap, I use paper and glue. I painted the wig cap to match the doll's skin and used solvent-based glue to fix the wefts in place. To style the hair, I'm heating up the metal part on my brush and then twisting the hair in small sections around it. I'm using a hair dryer to ease the task of putting the head back on. And that is our final step. She is now done! I'm adding a little book as an accessory that I made off camera and it has real working pages. I learned a lot making this doll. Annie is actually the first one I ever filmed making. So this video predates everything else on my channel. So you can really see the progress if you compare it to my most recent work, like the delightful collab. Link to that video in the info card. blast photographing her and she is now in her new home with my swap partner Vanessa. If you want to see what Vanessa made for me, do watch my unboxing video. I will leave a link to it in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching, subscribe if you haven't yet done that, like this video and leave a comment. I would love to know what you think of Annie. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Josephine's Creatures. Until next time, bye!